Hey everyone, Savo here and today we are going to create a life and mana system for our game. Let's jump into it. For this tutorial I have prepared two simple black backgrounds and the actual life and mana bars in white. So the first thing to do is to create a UI image and place the life background on it. Create another UI image as a child of the previous one and give it the actual life bar sprite. After placing them in the exact position you want, simply duplicate the life bar and change the color to red. Next, change the image type to field and the field method to horizontal. Now, when playing around with the fill amount, you already see the life bar working exactly as we want it. When you are done and happy with the results, simply follow the same steps to create the mana bar. The one and obvious thing to change is the color, which in my case is blue. The last step of our UI setup is to actually have a number which represents the life and mana that our character has when playing. For that, create a UI text object and place it as a child under the life bar. As you may notice, the text isn't really sharp and to change that, increase the font size and decrease the scale. It already looks so much cleaner. Again, follow the same steps for the mana text and we are done. Now it's time to make our system work with code. For that, create a C-sharp script that I like to name Life Mana Handler and open it. Since we are going to use image and text components, we need to implement the Unity Engine UI libraries. We start with the public variables which are the image and text game objects of the life and mana bars we created earlier. We also need float variables for the life and mana that our character has. Finally, we are going to use private float variables for the life and mana that our character currently has after for example receiving damage or using a magic skill. The calculate life variable will be a percentage of our current life in comparison to the total life of our character. To achieve this, we simply divide our current life with our my life variable. After that, we now have to set the fill amount of the life bar. This will be done with the mathf library and the move towards function. The first parameter is the start point and the current fill amount of the life bar. The second parameter is the end point, which takes a number between 0 and 1. For that reason, we have the calculate life variable and use it here. The third parameter is simply the time it takes for the start to the end point. We just use time.delta time. With that simple line of code, our fill amount of the life bar is ready. Now, we just have to set the right text. This will be just the current life variable cast as an integer. Let's move on to the mana bar. Here, the functionality is a little bit different. We want to check if our current mana is less than our total mana, and if so, we slowly fill it up until it's equal. In the move towards function of the fill amount, use as the second variable 1, since we want it to be filled. For the time variable, simply multiply the time.delta time with any amount depending on how slow or fast you want the mana bar to be filled. Next, for the current mana variable, we are going to use the same function. For the first parameter, we are going to divide our current mana with our my mana variable. Second parameter will be 1 and for the third one, make sure to use exactly the same time.delta time and multiplicator as above. Multiply the whole result with your total mana and you are done. After that, we check if our current mana is less than 0 and if so, we are going to reset it. And finally, we assign our current mana to our text game object converting it from a float variable to an integer. At this point, we are done with the update function and just need 
two more public functions in order to receive damage or use mana. For the damage function, we will need a float damage parameter and then simply subtract it from our current life. Next, in order to reduce mana, we will have another function with a float parameter named mana and subtract it this time from our current mana. Here, we also need to subtract from the mana bar fill amount the right percentage based on the mana cost. And with that said, it's time to test our code inside of Unity. I will quickly create two buttons, one in order to receive damage and one to use a magic skill in order to reduce our mana. After that, assign our script we created to any game object you like, but don't forget to drag and drop the right game objects into the public variables available in the inspector. For our total life, I'm going to set 100 and for the total mana, I just put in 50. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to assign the game object with a script to our damage button. Select the public damage function and set the damage power to 10. Same thing with the magic button, assigning the reduce mana function and the mana cost of 20. Let's test what we have done so far. As you see, something went wrong. Our life and mana went all the way down to zero. And to fix that, let's open up our script again. In the start function, we have to set our current life and our current mana to our total life and mana we set earlier in the inspector. And that's it! Let's go back in Unity and click on the play button. As you now see, our life bar is filled by 100 and our mana bar by 50. Let's take some damage. Perfect! Every time I click on the damage button, our life is reduced by 10 and the life bar fill amount also. Now let's see what happens when clicking on the magic button. Works great as well, our mana is reduced and slowly filling up until it's full. A last bonus tip is to check if our mana cost is less or equal to our current mana in order to cast any spell. For that, we will add an if else statement into our public reduce mana function. If we have enough mana, we're going to do as before. Else, we just write not enough mana and handle the result. Also, in the update function, we're going to check if our current life is less or equal to zero, which will eventually handle the game over scene. By testing this now, you see that the magic button won't work until our mana is filled up at at least 20. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned how to create your own life and mana system. Hit the like and subscribe buttons in order to support me and my channel. It would really be appreciated. See you next week. Ciao.